Hey there, and welcome to Broadband Deployment News. So there's this guy in Michigan who was quoted by Comcast $50,000 to extend broadband service to his house because he didn't have good broadband there. So what did he do? Did he decide to move? Did he just give up? No, he built his own ISP. Be right back. Thanks for joining me, Rick Husey here with Zcorum. So uh, I just find this story fascinating. This guy, uh, he's like a hero to me because, uh, as I say, he did not give up when he realized he could not get uh, broadband service to his home. So he's in Michigan, and there are you know, some hard-to-reach places there, depending on where you are. And uh, he was in an area that was hard to reach, so he had a, a few options. And um, you can see here, man who built ISP, instead of paying Comcast $50,000, expands to hundreds of homes. And the really fun part is he's now going to get $2.6 million from the government to expand fiber in his local area in Michigan, in rural Michigan. So uh, here's a picture of uh, some equipment and fiber that uh, is just for basically the construction parts of things uh, to get everything moving there. And I, I don't, this, this could have been for work that he's already done. So he already was is serving customers, but now he's gotten money because he's been successful doing this, this very small business that now he's going to have $2.6 million to spend. Um, and he's, this is still his, he's still got a day job. At least he does for now. Uh, it's Jared, Jared Mock, I believe it is the Michigan man who built a fiber to home internet provider because he couldn't get good broadband service from AT&T or Comcast is expanding with help of 2.6 million in government money. Uh, when this is from uh, Ars Technica, so when they first wrote about him in January 2021, he was providing a service to about 30 rural homes, including his own, with his ISP. And he actually, he actually became a telephone company because he said I, he filed the tariffs. I think I think he might have said it was up to five thousand dollars or something to file the tariffs to become an ISP. Oh, excuse me, to become a tel telephone company because rights of way would be easier in the long run. So he's actually a telco. Um, so 30 homes, including his own, um, it's now, it's called Wash, Washtenaw Fiber Properties, LLC. He now has about 70 customers and will extend his network to nearly 600 more properties with money from ARPA, the Coronavirus State and Local Fiscal Recovery Fund. So uh, that's money that's um, going to states that states are then subgranting to people like Jared here. So uh, the U.S. government allocated Washtenaw County, 71 million for a variety of infrastructure projects and the county devoted a portion of broadband. County issued a request for proposal, RFP seeking contractors to wire up addresses that were known to be unserved or underserved. So they did this study to determine what was unserved and underserved. So the timing is really good on this. It was, uh, right after the pandemic. So he started his business really before, was getting all this going before the pandemic. And then, um, in fact, uh, I had some numbers here to look at. So yeah, 20, 2016 through 2018 uh, is when he started buying splicers and I uh, bought uh, like two kilometers of fiber. He bought an OTDR to do testing because, you know, once you have the fiber in there, you got to be able to test to make sure your signals are good. Uh, 20, 2020, 2019 to 2020, he started construction. So again, this was really uh, kind of pre-pandemic planning and then it hit right at the time when people would really be needing this service. Um, so uh, it's pretty interesting that he got the starter at the right time. So uh, again, they did RFPs. Uh, they had, he says, they had this gap filling RFP and in my own wild stupidity or brilliance, I'm not sure which yet, I bid on the whole project in my area and managed to win through the, that competitive bidding process. Uh, and you can see why when you, you know, when you look at the kind of things that this guy's doing, he's kind of a one man shop. So he doesn't have a lot of overhead. Uh, that he has to contend with like some other you know established isps uh, his isp is one of four selected by washtenaw county to wire up different areas mox network currently has about 14 miles of fiber and he'll build another 38 miles to complete the government funded project it says i have at least two homes where i have to build a half mile to get to one house it will cost over thirty thousand dollars for each of those homes to get served now that's um that's some significant money now if you multiply what he has to serve by the money he got, uh, he's getting good money, but obviously these really long runs are gonna take up a lot of that. So uh, the contract between Mosh, Mock, Mosh and the county was signed in May, 2022 and requires him to extend his network to an estimated 417 addresses. So that's what he's required to do. So if you take the money that he 
is getting in that 417 addresses divided by that, he's getting, I think it was $6,800 or so per home pass. So that's some really good money. And I'm sure on a lot of the homes that he's doing, it's going to be well under that. But then he's got these you know, $30,000 passes on a couple of these homes that he's got to take into account as well. He explained that his new fiber routes would pass 596 potential customers. So he says, I'm building past some addresses that are covered by other grant programs, but I'll very likely to be, be the first mover in building those areas, he said. So that could be RDOF money. I don't know. Now, um, I guess, you know, I don't know if there's any restrictions from ARPA funds on allocating to areas that are already getting funding from other grant programs. I don't know if he'll run into something there, but in the, in the, in any event, he's got 415, 417 addresses he can use this money for. And then he can use his own money for those other addresses if he needs to. Uh, under the contract terms, he'll provide 100 megabit per second symmetrical internet with unlimited data for $55 a month and one gig for unlimited, with unlimited data for $79 a month, which we'll see in a minute is uh, quite a bit higher than what he's charging now. But of course, he's getting a lot of this funded here, so we should be able to make, have no problem making that work. Uh, I said his installation fees are typically 199. Unlike many larger ISPs, he provides simple bills that contain a single line item for internet service and no extra fees. So again, one man shop. He's doing this all on his own. Uh, he, you know, these are his neighbors. That's how he got started. Uh, he, you know, as far as funding some of this early work, and I'll, we'll look at a spreadsheet here of some of his costs as he was looking at this as budgetary things. But um, he had talked to one service provider that had an idea that I sound like he used where he went to some people and he said, if you will pay me $5,000 instead of 50,000 from Comcast, right? He said, if you'll pay me $5,000, then I'll give you a $50 credit for a hundred months or basically um, like eight and a half years. So people would be paying $5,000 up front. They'd get the service with that $50 credit over time. So they would be paying very little for internet over that time. So as long as they knew probably that they were staying in the home, they'd be happy to do that. And he said, that, you know, it's not like if they left, if they moved, that then I kept that money. That would, that would stay with the home. So if they sold the house, they could tell all the people that were buying the house, hey, and also you've got a $50 credit per month on internet for X number of months. So he said, I've made sure that I was not trying to rip anybody off there. Um, he also committed to participate in the FCC's ACP program or the Affordable Connectivity Program, which provides a $30 subsidy a month to households that meet income eligibility requirements. So um, that means he will be providing that $30 credit to anybody on there. So uh, that's an additional credit for those that are low income. The contract requires all project expenses to be incurred by the end of 2024 and for the project to be completed by the end of 2026. But he claims for a much quicker timeline, telling Ars that his goal is to build out about half of it by the end of this year and the other half by the end of 2023. The exact funding amount he's getting is $2 million. $618,958.03. So again, here it says Comcast wanted 50,000 and AT&T offers just 1.5 megs. So operating an ISP isn't his primary job. He still works for Akamai. Uh, he's still a network architect at Akamai. He started planning to build his own network about five years ago after being unable to get modem modern service, modern service from any of the major ISPs. AT&T only had DSL with download speeds of 1.5 meg, and that's probably, you know, if, depending on distance, it might not be that high. Comcast once told him it would charge $50,000 to extend his cable network to his house. And then he would have gone with Comcast if they only wanted 10,000. Comcast demands those upfront fees for line extensions when customers are outside its network area, even if the rest of the neighborhood already has Comcast service. And as you can see, I mean, he's talking about, you know, $30,000 to get to these houses. So there is, there are real costs there. And you can see why somebody like Comcast might do that. But he made the decision. Uh, and there's this video I'll link to where you can find it. It's on at the bottom of his website, his web page, I should say. Um, but he talks about, you know, how he went through this process of thinking about this. So he gets this fee of $50,000 and he's thinking, do I want to do that? And he's thinking, well, I could move. But he talked about the houses being devalued, homes being de devalued there because there wasn't good broadband. So, you know, I could move, but there's expenses related to that. Um, then he was thinking, well, what would it cost me to just get my own internet? So I think he came up with a figure. I believe what he was saying was it would cost him like $60,000 maybe just to get internet for himself, uh, to get good, fast, fast internet, you know, without all the costs of providing it to other people. So. He's looking at 50,000, 60,000. I think he made the decision, well, I'm just going to do it myself. And then I can actually, 
you know, build on that and provide this to others. And actually during this time, he wound up, a, a WISP came in and he wound up being able to get pretty decent internet uh, compared to what he was getting before. I think he said 50 megabits per second. So uh, it was less than AT&T. I don't know why I didn't go with the 1.5, but he was getting like uh, 50 megabits per second. Um, oh, that's 1.5 megabits per second. Sorry, that's way better than AT&T. So 50 megabits per second that he was getting from the wireless provider. Um, so, and now he works very closely with them. So, uh, you know, the wireless provider is actually getting service from him now. So in a way they're in a competitive situation, but he actually was getting service from them. And then he was uh, actually, it's an interesting relationship. So again, if you watch that video, you can see that. Um, <clears throat> let's see, it says um, he was using, yeah, 50 megabit per second wire, wireless service before switching over to his own fiber network. So that was in here. Um, let's see what else there is. So the, the county's RFP set 25 by three as the, the minimum acceptable tier. So that would be really, that's anything under that is considered unserved. And if you're at 25 by three, it's underserved according to uh, the Infrastructure Act. So, um, you know, they were, it says here, there was a strong preference for at least a hundred meg download and ideally symmetrical from wireline technology to accommodate present and future bandwidth hungry applications. So this is what the state was putting together as far as taking their ARPA money and how they were going to allocate that. It says he's faced increasing equipment costs. Uh, he's made some new, made some upgrades to his operation. In our previous story, they mentioned, uh, we described how he was renting an air compressor to blow fiber through his conduits. Uh, he recently bought an industrial air compressor to a government liquidation auction, spending under 4,000 for equipment that often costs about 20,000. He had previously spent, previously spent 8,000 on a directional drill machine that installs cables or conduits under driveways and roads without digging giant holes. I think that's the machine he spent. Yeah, I think that's the machine. He spent money on this boring machine and then it was stolen. So, um, so he has this big piece of equipment stolen and he posted something on uh, Facebook, you know, kind of, oh no, look, this was stolen and somehow Someone, I think, saw it or found out about it, and uh, they found out that somebody was selling some very similar looking equipment in Chicago, and his equipment had some, uh, you know, particular marks on it or something that made it easy to identify. So he actually was able to go to the police with his pictures of his equipment and what was going on in Chicago, and he was actually able to get his equipment back that had been stolen. Uh, increasing prices have been a problem. He said that he used to buy a fiber conduit at 32 cents a foot, but he's paying more than double that now. The hand holes, hand holes that are buried underground at various points throughout his network used to cost 300 and are now about 700. So he's seeing inflation like everybody else. And I'm sure he's dealing with supply chain issues as well. And while he's built the network using his own money, he said one wealthy family last year wrote a nearly six figure check to fund a network expansion to let them and all of their neighbors get internet access. So that was nice of them. And that helped him out, obviously. When we first wrote about Mock, and this is R saying this, he was using a contractor to install most of the fiber conduits and installing the actual fiber cable into the conduits himself. He said he's using a few contractors now, but he's still doing some fiber laying work. So he's basically, he's like I say, he's got a daytime job and he's doing a lot of the stuff in the evenings. He said network management has been smooth without any major problems over the last 18 months or so. His network generally uses about 500 megabits per second of traffic and he can ramp up to four gigs as needed. He said he has people lined up to handle emergencies so I can go on vacation. He took a trip to Europe in March. During his Europe trip, there was an outage of, at one of the power substations in his area while he was away. Some of his customers lost internet service due to that power outage, but he, his network kept running because of the generator at his house. There was no power for about 24 hours, so my house ran on generator for 24 hours and I could see which customers were out of service. So he had some customers that were down simply because they had no power, but because, because he had this generator, which is good. He had a generator backup, backup generator. Uh, he had customers that were still online during that time. So really interesting guy. Uh, and you can look here and see uh, kind of, I guess this is maybe his initial build out or budget for, to build out Waters Road. And, you know, so you see he's got uh, 20 homes passed. Uh, so again, when it says 70% um, take rate, from the homes passed. So he's passing, at this point anyway, he was passing 20 homes and he had 14 customers take him up on that. So that's 70% take rate, which is good. It's not a lot of customers, but you can see some of his costs here. He's got a uh, number of feet underground. He decided, he looked at aerial and underground and decided, 
underground was the way to go just because it's more reliable. And he's had no fiber outages, he said, other than stupid stuff maybe that he's done, but he's not had any uh, outages. So uh, you can see here, that's a big bulk of the cost, basically $111,000. Had permitting costs, outdoor cabinets, that's a chunk right there. Um, you know, got drawing, staking, and a lot of the, that stuff. A conduit, fiber, obviously the big cost in fiber, drop fiber, you got that. So he included the fiber to the home kind of drop, <clears throat> which sometimes people forget about when they're budgeting this. Uh, it's got other kinds of things in here. So it all comes up to $162,485. So that's, that's a lot of money. And then you look here, he's got 14 customers. Uh, so he's got that amount. So you can see he's got his uh, ARPU average revenue per user is $72. Uh, so he's got annual revenue of 12,000. So then you can see why this is the day job or not his day job. This is a nighttime job, at least at this point. Uh, <clears throat> year one revenue, 14,000. And then his annual profit, 11,256. So he's got a good profit margin there. Uh, years for ROI, 12.37. So that is based on this initial build. Um, you know, he is expand, he's expanded now. He's got 70 homes. So who knows what it looks like for him financially now. Uh, he may be at a point where he can quit his day job. In fact, he really needs to, and he probably will. I mean, he's getting two, two plus million dollars um, to uh, install, you know, 400 plus homes and maybe he can get up to 600 homes. So uh, I would think that he'd gonna have to, he's going to have to do that in order to maintain this business. So... This may be his new daytime job. So this is his web site, or I say web page. So it's funny, it looks like something out of the 1990s, but this is really all he needs. I'm sure his marketing, he does, he did a lot of marketing. He talks about in the video, um, you know, sending out letters and doing a lot of prep work and reaching out to people. So he didn't just throw this together. He put a lot of planning and thought into this. And I'll show you where that video is and I'll link to it as well, but interesting story. So again, this is his web page. Uh, collecting signups for 2022 expansion plans. Uh, so, you know, you can click and probably fill out a form there. You can read this. If you've got a pink flag nearby, maybe that means that you've got fiber already passing your house. So here's the pricing that he's got right now. Again, we saw the pricing that he's going to be offering uh, as part of getting these funds. So but right now he's got 100 meg, 100, yeah, I'm sure that's 100 megabits per second, 100 BPS. It's going to be 100 megabits per second. Uh, $65, and he's got... Project installation, 199 normal installation, five, I'm not sure what the difference is, but he says he normally charges $199. Uh, I'm not sure why that says normal. 250 megabits per second at 75, 500 megabits at 99, and a gig at 139. So those prices will be coming down with the money he's getting uh, where he's going to be offering that service. Uh, he's got no data caps, no overage fees, no contracts, cancel service. I uh, can't quite see over there. Let's say, uh, cancel service after the first month if you're displeased. Um, what happens if you're displeased after three months? I don't know. Upload and download speeds are symmetrical and measured in megabits per second. Uh, if you need fiber or other access for your business, please contact us. Variety of options. Uh, you can view their service area, always expanding. And uh, then here's the video. So if you watch this, he did a, vi he did a, uh, he's been going to Nanoc for years, he said. So he did a, a, uh, little session at Nanog where he talked about this and went through some slides and talked about everything that he did to put this together. So again, that's very interesting. So I will link to this page as well as to this story on Ars Technica. Uh, but again, this guy is, uh, he's, he's like my hero because a lot of times people are presented with a problem like that. And there's not many people that have the capability to do what he did, which is basically become a telephone company kind of a one-man telephone company and then build out a fiber network. Um, now he's got 70 customers and he's got millions of dollars coming in where he's going to be able to expand that. So again, this is really developing into a nice business for him. So uh, happy for him and um, I think it's great. So uh, you know, a lot of times we talk about broadband deployment, we're talking about large companies doing that, whether it is a Comcast or a Charter or Windstream or even a uh, independent telephone company or cable company that's been in business for 50 you know, years, something like that. This guy is, uh, this guy is doing it all just in a matter of a couple of years. So I think that's great. Uh, thanks for joining me. If this was interesting, please give me a like, a thumbs up on the video, subscribe if you're not subscribed and click the little bell to be notified when I'm live. Thanks a lot. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.